Welcome to our podcast episode, where we explore the topics of health and healthy aging. For diets that are on opposite ends of the spectrum, there is much that carnivores and vegans agree on. In today's episode, we're going to try to take a balanced look at both diets through the lens of health and cardiovascular disease, and then dive into the so-called lean mass hyper-responders. And our conclusion at the end might surprise you. There are nine similarities between these two nutritional communities and only two differences. The first thing they have in common is their goals. Both want you to be as healthy as possible and stay free of cancer, cardiovascular disease, and dementia for as long as possible. Both communities agree that if we move from a typical Western diet to an optimal diet, we can add up to a decade of healthy living. Currently, cardiovascular disease represents 32% of all global deaths, deaths that can and should be prevented. There is also growing interest in the idea that Alzheimer's is a metabolic disease that affects the brain. Both communities agree that proper nutrition can provide tremendous benefits. The second similarity is weight management. Both communities agree that we should be at a healthy weight, and unfortunately, global obesity has almost tripled since 1975. Obesity is a major contributor to cardiovascular disease, including heart attacks and strokes. And it's not just about the excess weight, but also the inflammatory processes and metabolic changes that come with it, which put stress on the heart and blood vessels. Maintaining a healthy weight is crucial for managing type 2 diabetes. Excess body fat, especially around the stomach, is linked to insulin resistance, in which your body has difficulty managing blood sugar levels effectively. This can lead to a cascade of health problems, from nerve damage to vision problems. Obesity is also a major factor in cancer, and even your bones and joints benefit from a healthy weight. Obesity increases the risk of osteoarthritis, which causes the cartilage in your joints to wear away. The extra weight puts more pressure on joints, like the hips and knees, accelerating this wear and tear. Patients with obesity often suffer from sleep apnea, which causes them to wake up incredibly tired and have morning headaches. Both nutritional communities agree that reversing these processes can significantly improve patient health. We can help them wake up feeling energized, have less wear and tear on their joints, and reduce cancer rates. Finally, there is an important connection between obesity and mental health. So which diet is better for weight loss? The carnivorous diet or the vegan diet? Both camps will say their diet is the best. However, meta-analyses of previous studies suggest that most diets are roughly the same, and the differences between diets are too small to be significant. Current thinking suggests that the best diet for weight loss is the one you can stick to. There is no one-size-fits-all diet that works for everyone. So if the vegan diet works for you, great. The same applies if the carnivorous diet works excellently for you. The third commonality is that both communities aim for low blood sugar levels. Elevated blood sugar can harm blood vessels and nerves, particularly those in the eyes, kidneys, and heart. This damage heightens the risk of cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, and vision issues. Both carnivorous and vegan diets, when appropriately planned, can decrease blood sugar levels, albeit in distinct ways. The carnivorous diet, being low in carbohydrates, can mitigate blood sugar spikes. Conversely, the vegan diet is often fiber-rich, leading to slower, more gradual increases in blood sugar levels. Moreover, the high fiber content in these foods aids in slowing sugar absorption, ensuring more stable energy levels. Prosody Raquel's Percent. Both diets can be beneficial, especially when total calorie intake is limited. Similar to weight loss studies, recent meta-analyses suggest that various dietary patterns can be effective for managing type 2 diabetes. Thus, both communities share the goal of maintaining low blood sugar levels. The fourth commonality is blood pressure. Blood pressure is the force that circulating blood exerts on the walls of blood vessels. When this pressure is too high, known as hypertension, it can lead to serious health problems. Hypertension is often called the silent killer because it typically has no symptoms, but can lead to heart attacks, strokes, and kidney failure. Both vegan and carnivorous diets can have significant positive effects on blood pressure, although through different mechanisms. 
The vegan diet emphasizes eating fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, which are rich in potassium and help balance the amount of sodium in our cells. High sodium levels are a known risk factor for high blood pressure. Although meat contains potassium, it is generally present in lower amounts than in fruits and vegetables. On the other hand, the carnivorous diet eliminates processed foods, which are often high in sodium. And since both diets can lead to weight loss, it also helps lower blood pressure. The fifth similarity is the importance of micronutrient health. 31% of the population is at risk of at least one vitamin deficiency. Both communities recognize how critical it is to achieve our recommended daily intakes for vitamins and minerals. The vegan diet is often deficient in B12 and requires reliance on supplements and fortified foods. The carnivorous diet, on the other hand, may be deficient in vitamin C. There was a famous example recently where James Blunt was diagnosed with a vitamin C deficiency after following an all-meat diet. My overall point is that both communities agree that we need to achieve the recommended daily intakes of our micronutrients. The sixth similarity is saying no to smoking and alcohol. For many years, many believed that moderate alcohol consumption, such as a glass of red wine per day, had health benefits. This assumption was based largely on studies suggesting that moderate drinking could improve heart health. However, recent research challenges this idea and suggests that no alcohol consumption can be considered safe for health. When it comes to smoking, the harmful effects on our health are widely documented. Both communities agree on this. The seventh similarity is the importance of protein. A growing body of evidence suggests that higher muscle strength is associated with lower overall death rates. That's why clinical guidelines recommend increasing protein intake to maximize the benefits of resistance training. It seems that the magic number for protein intake is 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. We also have great evidence published in the British Medical Journal showing that higher protein intakes are associated with lower death rates. Therefore, protein intake is usually not a problem with the carnivorous diet, but the vegan diet must be carefully constructed, and sometimes it must be supplemented with protein powders to achieve this goal. The eighth similarity is the meaning of movement. Exercise has a variety of benefits for our bodies. It increases energy levels, reduces cancer and cardiovascular disease rates, and helps maintain a healthy weight. And finally, the common denominator between these communities is the rejection of aggressive statements towards other forms of nutrition. There are individuals in both the carnivorous and vegan communities who often respond to the other side with strong words. However, this form of communication is not constructive and the overwhelming majority of both communities recognize that such extreme views are often driven by personal motives. That's a long list of similarities between these two communities, despite the very different diets. The two critical differences I see are the ideas about fiber and blood cholesterol levels, but there is a way to bridge these differences. Later more. When it comes to fiber, vegans often rely on graphs like these from large meta-analyses that show higher fiber intakes are associated with lower overall death rates. This particular study was funded by the Health Research Council of New Zealand. The carnivorous community, on the other hand, would often dismiss this research by saying that it simply shows healthy user bias and that correlation is not the same causation is. When it comes to blood cholesterol levels, the current medical belief is that the higher a person's LDL cholesterol and ApoB levels, the higher their lifetime risk of cardiovascular disease. There are even suggestions in the literature that the optimal LDL cholesterol level appears to be that present at birth, between 20 and 40 milligrams per deciliter. But on carnivorous and ketogenic diets, lean individuals may experience an increase in their LDL cholesterol levels, while their triglyceride levels decrease and their HDL cholesterol levels increase. This phenomenon is called lean mass hyperresponder, and here is David Feldman, one of the leading people researching this phenomenon. And then we'll talk about how we can bridge this knowledge gap. What could explain the phenomenon of lean mass hyperresponders? First, 
Lipoproteins are transport vehicles for lipids in the blood. We are particularly interested in the very low-density lipoproteins, VLDL, which precede the LDL particles. VLDLs are produced in the liver and are rich in triglycerides, which are typically made up of fat that comes from different parts of the body. Triglycerides are the storage form of fat. Think of VLDL as a vessel loaded with lipids, triglycerides and cholesterol, as well as fat-soluble vitamins and other substances the body needs. The lipid energy model focuses on the rapid turnover of these triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. They are packed with triglycerides, and there are three key aspects to their turnover that we should focus on. These are particularly important among many others. First, the triglyceride-rich VLDL converts into triglyceride-poor LDL. This happens because it releases its triglyceride cargo, which is taken up by the cells. This process is made possible by various enzymatic activities. Another important point that is often overlooked is the existence of a fleet of small HDL particles nearby. These absorb various components that are released during this process. Therefore, the process may seem a bit messy. Yes, in fact, as VLDL shrink, parts can fall off, which are then absorbed by small HDL particles and ultimately become large HDL. In layman's terms, one way to describe it is that ApoB lipoproteins like our VLDLs start out big and then get small, while HDLs start out small and get big. This process explains the phenomenon of lean mass hyperresponders, as increased secretion and turnover of VLDL into LDL can lead to a higher LDL concentration. More triglycerides are mobilized into the bloodstream. However, the turnover of these ApoB lipoproteins releases more components that can be absorbed by HDL, which could explain the higher HDL cholesterol levels. Being metabolically healthy results in lower triglyceride levels. This may explain the lower triglycerides and why this triad phenomenon is so widespread across all different populations, ages, and ethnicities. Why do lean and metabolically healthy people often show the lean mass hyperresponder profile? To understand this, it's helpful to look at fat cell size and genetic factors. Imagine two highways, Highway A, which is free of traffic, and Highway B, which is full of trucks and traffic jams. If studies are only conducted on Highway B, where trucks often cause accidents, one might mistakenly assume that trucks are generally dangerous. But that ignores the conditions on Highway A, where trucks can drive safely. This analogy illustrates the importance of considering context when it comes to scientific knowledge. Large fat cells and genetic predispositions can be like a crowded highway leading to metabolic disorders, while smaller, healthier fat cells and favorable genetic makeup can mean smoother traffic and therefore a lower risk of metabolic diseases. With this understanding, we approach the main exit to discover the mechanisms behind the lean mass hyperresponder profile. The fat cell size study examines the connections between the size of adipocytes, our fat cells, and metabolic dysregulation. When fat cells grow excessively, they lose their functionality, which can lead to their dysfunction or even death. This results in an increased presence of macrophages, immune cells that take care of the dead cells. These processes stand associated with what is called dysmetabolism or lipid dysmetabolism and show an association with cardiovascular disease. In particular, visceral fat cells, which accumulate primarily around the midsection of the body, tend to be larger and correlate with higher levels of fasting insulin, HOMA-IR, and fasting blood glucose. They are also associated with lower HDL cholesterol levels and higher triglycerides, as well as an increase in LDL cholesterol. HOMA-IR stands for Homeostasis Model Assessment of Insulin Resistance. It means homeostatic model for the assessment of insulin resistance. It is an index used to evaluate insulin resistance in the body. Insulin resistance is a condition in which cells no longer respond appropriately to insulin, which can lead to elevated blood sugar levels. HOMA-IR is often used in medical research and clinical practice to assess insulin resistance in people with diabetes or metabolic syndrome. It is based on fasting blood samples of glucose and insulin and calculates insulin resistance using a mathematical model. A higher HOMA-IR value indicates greater insulin resistance, while lower values indicate better insulin sensitivity. In the context of the lipid energy model, 
decreasing acceptance of triglyceride delivery by the cell surface could result in less conversion of triglyceride-rich VLDL to triglyceride-poor LDL. This would also mean that small HDL particles are less likely to convert to large HDL particles. A high presence of triglyceride-rich VLDL and small HDL, associated with lower HDL cholesterol levels, could be metaphorically viewed as a traffic jam, offering important insights into the mechanisms behind metabolic health conditions. Doctors and researchers recognize the importance of these associations because they highlight how changes in lipid transport can lead to metabolic imbalances. Metabolic health is frequently indicated by blood markers, such as low levels of triglycerides and glucose. Conversely, individuals facing metabolic issues may exhibit increased levels. However, these figures are symptomatic, not necessarily the root cause of the issues. The underlying mechanisms that result in these metabolic bottlenecks are intricate and involve factors such as lipoprotein transport and genetic predispositions. Looking at ApoB is crucial because it is a marker for lipoproteins that transport cholesterol and triglycerides. Prosody rate. Failure of these transport mechanisms can have profound effects on health and is linked to diseases such as atherogenic dyslipidemia, which has been known for decades and is typically associated with obesity, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. This dyslipidemia is characterized by a combination of low HDL cholesterol and high triglycerides, which is often accompanied by an increase in small, dense LDL particles. These findings are important for everyone, from interested laypeople to specialized lipidologists. A study is currently being conducted to explore the phenomenon of lean mass hyperresponders to find out whether these individuals are at a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. This study measures non-calcified coronary plaque volume from baseline to final visit to determine the rate of change in coronary plaque volume for individuals using this diet. This rate of change is then compared to the Miami Heart Study. This allows us to find out whether lean mass hyperresponders have accelerated accumulation of coronary plaque volume or whether it is the same compared to other diets. Lastly, ethics. Ethics plays a pivotal role in nutrition, but in this episode, our focus is on the health impacts of diets. Despite their differences, both the carnivorous and vegan communities share several viewpoints, especially regarding the significance of fiber and blood cholesterol levels in health and the risk of cardiovascular disease. The ongoing lean mass hyperresponder study aims to clarify whether an increase in LDL cholesterol through these diets indeed escalates the risk of cardiovascular disease. It's vital to find a diet that aligns with your individual needs, as not every diet is suitable for everyone. Whether it's a vegan or carnivorous diet, the most crucial factor is that it works for you on a personal level. Until the study results are available, the question of the long-term effects of heightened LDL values remains open, underscoring the importance of conducting such studies. We are nearing the end of this episode. Your interest and the time you have given us are invaluable to us. We sincerely hope that we were able to open up new perspectives and provide you with valuable insights. Until we meet again in the next episode, we wish you the best of health. Until then, stay curious.